Welcome back. So just to review what we're doing in the last video, we were talking about some of the things in this pathway right here. I'm talking a lot about vitamin B12 physiology and biochemistry. And so I think we've all kind of come to understand that this molecule right here, this molecule cob 2 alumin, or you could think of it as cobalamin B12, where the cobalt's in the 2 plus state, right? So cobalt's in the 2 plus state. I think we've all agreed that that form of cobalt or that form of vitamin B12 is not really any use to us because as we know, um, we're going to have to eventually adenosylate, so we're going to have to adenosylate cobalamin, in which case we'll have to start in the 1 plus state. When we deal with methionine synthase reductase, we'll find there that this guy right here, 2 plus, is worthless. Um, whenever we're doing uh, methionine synthase in general, um, that's another enzyme that uses B12. That For that, you have to have cobalamin in the 1 plus oxidation state. So overall, uh, cobalamin in the 2 plus state is not worth anything to us for the most part. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to reduce the cobalt in the center into the 1 plus state. And some of this physiology that's, that we're going to talk about is really just kind of coming into fruition um, recently. And actually what we're going to do is we're going to look at this reaction right here. This reaction of going from B12 with cobalt in the 2 plus state to B12 with cobalt in the 1 plus state. This is catalyzed by cobalamin reductase or cob 2 alumin reductase. Okay. And since we're going from 2 plus right here, we're going from 2 plus to 1 plus, that means that per reaction of, of reducing cobalt, it's a one electron transfer. Okay. But here's the thing is the electron donor is NADH. Okay. And what do we know about NADH? That in general, NADH is only capable of transferring two electrons, which means that if we want to transfer one electron at a time from cobalt 2 plus to cobalt, we're going to have to use this coenzyme right here, which is called flavin adenine dinucleotide, or FAD. Okay, And the FAD is going to transfer electrons one at a time to cobalt 2 plus to make cobalt 1 plus. Now, you can imagine that the NADH is going to be transferring two electrons. Okay, So that means the FAD will ultimately, through an entire cycle of this enzyme, transfer two electrons. So this will transfer one electron and then it'll transfer another electron. So for one complete cycle of cobalamin reductase, we're going to have to have two B12s in the two plus state. And that's going to give us two B12s in the one plus state. So let's actually look at the mechanism and see how that occurs. Okay, so first of all, I'll do the mechanistic steps in green. We have this NADH in the active site. Of course, I've only drawn the nicotinamide ring. And the first step of the mechanism is going to be um, basically a spitting off of this hydride right here. So this lone pair comes in here to reform aromaticity of the NAD ring, and that ejects this hydride. And the hydride does a nucleophilic attack on this nitrogen, um, that's part of the shift base system of the isooxazine ring. That forces a double bond rearrangement and essentially puts a lone pair on this nitrogen up here atop the FAD ring. Now, technically, you know, there is some resonance with this amide right here, but we're really not concerned with that, okay? And so now what you have is you have this uh, form of FAD, which is termed, let me do this in light blue, this is termed FADH minus. Okay, so this is one of the reduced forms of FAD that you can have. And of course, we regenerate NAD plus in the process of performing the reduction of FAD. Okay, so now at this point, we have this Corin ring system or the B12 in the active site. Of course, I've largely and grossly abbreviated the um, B12 just because if you know anything about B12, it's the largest coenzyme by far in all of biochemistry. It's utterly massive, so I don't want to have to draw that every time. But essentially what's going to happen here is we're going to get the initial electron transfer onto the cobalt. Okay, so this is the first. This would be, this is corin, 
Corin number one. Okay, so what's going to happen is the, this these this lone pair on the nitrogen is going to kick in here to reform the shift base. Now this bond right here, this is important. I'm going to highlight these pi electrons in red. Okay, right there. The, that bond essentially is going to do a homolytic bond cleavage. Okay, one of the electrons, which I'll do a fish hook arrow because it's a one electron transfer, goes directly onto the cobalt. Okay, the other one is going to form a radical on this carbon right here that I'm highlighting in yellow. So this carbon right here receives um, a radical electron. Okay, so this was a one electron transfer, and one thing you should realize about the isooxazine ring is it's very, very, very capable of holding radical electrons. That's part of the beauty of FAD and FMN, is they can hold radicals and then transfer one electron at a time. Okay, and notice what that gives us, is it gives us the um, our first product right here. It's a Corin ring system where B12, where the cobalt is in the one plus oxidation state, which is exactly what we want. Okay. Now the next step is going to involve a proton transfer to regenerate FAD. So there's a water in the active site and we're essentially going to deprotonate here and that's going to reform the shift base. Now if I reform the, the pi electrons right here, what that es essentially does, let me highlight this in blue, what that does is that kicks off this electron, okay, and that electron essentially is going to go on to the next corin, okay, the next cobalt. So this right here, this is corin, corin number two. That's uh, that's not corin as in Dragon Ball Z, bad joke. Anyways, uh, so the, the electron goes on to the cobalt, and notice what that regenerates. Number one, it regenerates the FAD in the oxidized state, right? But more importantly, it gives us our, our second um, reduced cobalt or second reduced corin or second reduced B12 that is now free to be adenosylated. So what we'll find in the next video is this cobalt can actually be adenosylated so that we can react with um, enzymes like methylmalonyl CoA mutase and things like that. Okay? But what I want to I want to kind of um, lead you to a little bit is that cobalt in the one plus state. Whenever you have um, this cobalt in the one plus oxidation state with all the B12 business around it, the core and ring system, this cobalt is what we call a super nucleophile. Okay, we'll go in more detail on the super nucleophilicity of of cobalt, but it, it, it's sort of strange, um, at least when I first learned about it, it was strange, because when have you ever, I mean, when you took organic um, or, or gen chem, wherever you heard about nucleophiles, when on earth did you ever hear about a positively charged transition metal acting as a nucleophile? Well, it turns out that when cobalt plus one is sort of in a, a coordinate covalent bond with a system of chelates around it, it can actually act as a nucleophile. So you have to imagine there's sort of an orbital out here, there's sort of an orbital out there with, you know, two electrons in there. It's usually two electrons that get transferred. And so it turns out that cobalt's reduction potential is very, very large. Okay, and just remember that when you're talking about reduction potentials, if you want to predict spontaneity, you have this famous equation where the Gibbs free energy change for an oxidation reduction is equal to negative NFE, where N is the number of electrons transferred, usually in the case of cobalt plus its two electrons, times the Faraday constant times the cell potential, or the reduction potential. Okay, so this is a pretty important equation and it has lots of implications in oxidation reduction reactions in biochemistry. But just to kind of allude to where we're going, um, in both the adenosylation reaction um, of cobalt 1 plus and in the reaction of methionine synthase, this cobalt is going to act as a super nucleophile. And something just that's kind of hard to wrap your head around, at least it is for me, is, you know, it'd be one thing, you know, this is a transition metal with a plus charge. It would be one thing if this transition metal was just a, 
you know, an average nucleophile or maybe a weak nucleophile. But the fact of the matter is that it's a positively charged transition metal, and it's not just it's not just a nucleophile; it is a super nucleophile. And we'll go in more detail on that and the mechanisms of different enzymes that use B12 later. So hopefully that gave you a little bit of intuition on how we basically go from cobalamin in the 2 plus state, right? So here, let me go back. So we go from cobalamin in the 2 plus state and we reduce it down to the 1 plus state, which is something that's of very high use to us. See you in the next video.